guys, we have arrived in my hometown, Chicago, Chi-Town, boom, boom, boom. And the first place we go, I take them to a black owned restaurant called Jerk Villa. She got on no stockings and a dress. Yeah, with Kankos. She thought it was still going to be 85. Yeah. It is? Yeah, it's the Kankos capital. No, really? In Chicago? Yeah, Are you guys serious? Got, yeah, they got Kankos. Yeah, they got pregnant Kankos here. Yeah, man. Are you serious? I didn't know that. I only have one friend with Kankos. She cute, though. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alicia Keys has Kankos. She does? Yeah. That is very surprising. Yeah. So we arrived back at the hotel and um, we we're going to get fly shit. We've been out all day. It's time to get clean so we can hit the scene, but my girl's gonna come see me first. get to this black owned skating rink in Chicago called The Rink. I practically live there. Like I own property there. I'm always there. I'm so excited to get them on the wood. Like I love this. I do this for fun. I do it for stress relief. I do it for all type of reasons. And I just wanted Layla and Tariq to experience it even though they can't skate. I'm gonna say my girl Bree was getting it on them skates. I was in shock. She was doing the damn thing. I think I did okay, cause I haven't skated in like, since 1981. So I think I did okay. So I'm at the skating ring. We having a good time at the skating ring. Bree's doing her thing. She's doing pure wets all on the skating ring. Like she's in the ice capades. And I'm over here like Herman fucking Monster. <laughs> Stiff as hell. My gout acting up. I'm skating like Al Sharpton. So I'm struggling. <laughs> over here, but we're still having a good time though. So today we're going to the Original Soul Vegetarian Restaurant. You know, vegan could be hit or miss, but we heard some really good things about this place. Welcome, brother. This is our restaurant. My mother and father started this 35 years ago. Okay. It was a necessity. They became vegans, personal choice and for spiritual reasons. But they looked in their community, being in the south side of Chicago, yeah. there was no place for vegans to eat. So they said, hey, let's make a place so we can eat, at least for ourselves. Yes. And by proxy, we can be able to feed the community. Oh, perfect. And so that's what spawned this idea. Okay. And now, 35 years later, me and my brother and my sister, we run it. And this is our juice bar. Okay. This is the juice bar side of our restaurant where we sell all vegan, live, raw mm -hmm. items. We do specialty items as far as fruit drinks, wheatgrass, um, ice creams. Mm. And then we have a hot bar where people are like on the go. They can come make their macaroni, get their beans, their protein, or different eggplant. Who pomegranate. comes up with the recipes? Well, it's family recipes. Okay, um, okay. And all the outside people also contribute over the years. But we've been doing it, like I said, 35 years. So we kind of got everything down mm -hmm. packed. Mm -hmm. You know, some things we've been doing and some things we've been experimenting. We come up with new ideas, try to keep it fresh, of course. See, yeah. a lot of deterrent, especially for our people, is that the food don't taste right. Right. So right. if you get the right seasons, you put the right love in it, and especially our soul food, you put a vegan touch to it, you're going to love it. How important do you think it is for our community to learn how to eat correctly and eat more healthy? Oh, I think it's a necessity because mm -hmm. the key to having any financial Financial stability, mental stability goes with physical stability. Because yeah. you can't make no money, you can't do anything if you can't get out the bed. And health is your wealth. Absolutely. So if you don't know how to feed your body properly, you're never going to be able to do the necessary things it takes to be a successful man and woman in this planet. So 
So here at the, the vegan restaurant, man, the food is off the chain. For vegan food, I've never tasted vegan food that tasted this good. Every time I hear about a vegan soul food spot, it's always some eh, janky hit or miss thing. But this is hitting all the way. I've never had vegan soul food like this. The spread that they laid out for us, I felt like it was like Thanksgiving dinner. It wasn't chicken, but it definitely looked like chicken drumsticks. There were vegetarian looking burgers, um, macaroni and cheese, um, sweet potatoes. There were all kind of cakes, pies, desserts. It looked like your grandma's Thanksgiving dinner spread with all the pork and all of that stuff and everything was like vegan and vegetarian. And if I didn't know we were at a vegan or vegetarian restaurant, I wouldn't have thought twice. It was amazing. This food was so amazing. They literally had it, it was like a Thanksgiving feast. It looked like real macaroni and cheese. It looked like real chicken. It looked like real cakes and pies with, with made with flour and cheese, but it really wasn't. It tasted just like it. I don't know how they did it. All I know is I want to, I'll fly back next week just to go to that place. That place is great. I will move to Chicago to go there. So the next place we're going to is a place called The Culture Connection. Now this is a bookstore, an incense shop, a body oil shop. They sell all types of African essentials and they've sold a lot of my products like my books and my movies and DVDs over the years. So I have a real good relationship with the brothers and sisters here at the shop. Connections with Justice. How are you today? I'm good, and you? I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having us. We got Layla in the building, hey, finally. How you doing, Layla? Hey, okay. hey, Bree City. I know, oh, right? Um, Chi-town. Like Chi I know, yeah, right, right. to the death of us. Um, but I just, like, what, what prompted you to open your own business on the south side of Chicago? Okay, south side of Chicago, well, um, prior to this, mm -hmm. this was my father's hardware store. Oh, okay. So, you know, when he closed it up, um, you know, we decided to put something here. Then I'm um, a Chicago a public school teacher where I was then for 14 years, so I uh, taught history. So, you know, I said, okay, let's open up something that wasn't too far away from what I was already into, you know, oh. history and culture. So, okay. you know, that's what we are. But so. from the hardware store, what made you transition into this, these products? You know, the response was we only got um, foreigners who wanted to put, you know, corner grocery store here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we see those all through the hood, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I thought about it for a minute and said, uh, you know, let's put something there um, that's going to promote, you know, positivity, you know, in the African-American community. Mm -hmm. You know, through media, um, cultural apparel, you know, or artwork like you see on the wall, you know, so film. So that's where we are. So, you know, in this neighborhood from, let's say, the Dan Ryan Expressway to Halsted, that's about what, maybe almost a mile, yeah. six blocks. There may be only two black owned businesses. Yeah, and maybe, you telling the truth. You know, and maybe a good 12 to 15 businesses of other uh, uh, nationalities in a black, predominantly black neighborhood. Community, exactly. Right. So, Just as I noticed out here in Chicago, a lot of people are almost low key about letting people know that they have a black owned business because we try to contact certain people and it's like, you know, almost a hush hush type of thing for the people who do actually own businesses. Do you think there's some kind of fear that certain black businesses have that they let themselves be known as a black business that they'll be targeted or something? What's yeah. that energy about? Yes, I think there's a subconscious type of fear um, because this is a very political uh, oriented city. Um, you know, it's very, uh, it's neighborhood by neighborhood. Um, we have, uh, you know, African Americans in this community, uh, uh, Caucasians or whites in that community, you very know, segregated. so it's very segregated. Mm -hmm. really? So uh, there may be a fear here about, you know, in regards to being targeted from, you know, certain politicians who may have other agendas or other ethnic groups. So, you know, I you made a very good point because we were we were discussing that we literally have been getting so much pushback um, and trying to, and then other cities were very welcoming okay. and like come over here or showing us to different places and here we've been like, oh, it's real hush, hush, hush. And now that you said that like the political stance and um, different businesses having that, that little fear or that block up, 
Right. And it's just weird, you know. It's, 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 it's very weird. I know black businesses out here. They used to hit me up. Like it was one brother who owned like a, a restaurant. It was in like a white part of town, I think. But he would get, you know, noise ordinances. They would hit him with fines and liquor license. They would always mess with his license. Right. So do they do? Is that kind of a known thing? They try to mess with people with bureaucracy. I would say in, in certain neighborhoods. Okay. You know, uh, if you're up on the north side, possibly, where the um, dynamic of the um, the demographic is different. But, you know, um, in predominantly African-American neighborhoods, we don't really have that issue. But, you know, you might have extra presence of inspectors or uh, law enforcement, police officers who might every now and then pull customers over uh, because of the police presence in our community. So, um, but overall, it's, it's been pretty good, you know, no problems. So the next place we're going is a juice bar in downtown Chicago. It's black owned and it's called Fouve Express Juicery. And this one is a little special to me because one of my homegirls opened it and we've been knowing each other since we were like eight or nine years old. And I'm so proud of her and I can't wait to show this off. Okay, and we are here at Fruit Bay Express Juicery on um, Wabash and Roosevelt with Dominique Dunn, the owner. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey girl. Hey, that's you, girl. Okay, so y'all don't know this, but me and Dominique been down since we were like eight years Ooh, old. A long time. Yeah, so this is my homegirl, and she came and opened up her own oh, congratulations. juicery in Chicago. Hey. She actually has two locations. This is the flagship right now, but we really wanted to know like, what prompted you to start your own business as a young black owner. So what started me, so really quickly, I was in the fashion industry, living in New York, and I basically lived out of a suitcase always up in the air. And I wasn't sick, but I just realized that I wasn't like my vital health. You know, I didn't have energy, my mood swings would change. And I'm like, I'm young, why am I feeling like this? You know, why is my mood like this? Why don't I have energy? So my partner who started Fruit Bay with me, he basically was like, I think it's what we're putting in our body or what we're not putting in our body and we just started researching and everything just led back to whatever you eat or drink could either fight disease or cause disease and from that moment on I knew the next chapter in my life was doing something different to help myself and to help you know my community and my people do you do you have do you see you face any challenges being a black young black owner on a street like this because I'm sure there isn't a lot of other black owners on this street it's not but um, I found that especially like in the juicing world if you are often offering something that's authentic and it's real and it's good it really doesn't have a color because in this day and age we're living I mean people know sickness is all about what we're putting in our bodies so I feel like again if they come in here and they see what I'm offering and they taste it then they're like I don't really care who owns it you know so thank goodness you know I've been blessed where I really haven't obviously I've had a few people come in and they was like you know is it black owned and you know um, asking those questions but I feel like if you have to ask then exactly like yeah. you should just be going off my product but right. Right. health is wealth because without your health you have no wealth yes. on any level you yeah, better tell them yes. I love you. love you thank you for thank having you. us thank you you all keep doing what y'all doing thank okay <laughs> So I ran out of clothes traveling in Chicago. I done, we've been touring and I done ran out of clean pants and I'm not trying to turn pants inside out and wash them in sinks and shit. So we stopped at this place called Success. It's a black owned clothing store and they got some real nice stuff in here, but I'm tall as hell. So it's difficult for me to find stuff that fit me. So I want to find something fly, nothing like no skinny jeans, but I don't want no big cowboy Michael Jordan jeans. So I got to find something right in the middle for tall players such as myself. How that look? That look, it feel funny. I don't like the feel of it. Nah. How this look, Bree? Bree, tell me the truth. I'm gonna tell you the truth. How it look? This thing is hugging all it, up on me. No, it looks yeah. a little moist. It looks that was a little moist. It's a little bit too. It's a little bit too. It's a little I mean, it's different than what you be wearing when you be spitting that loud. That you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you, bro, they let the cat out the bag. Like I was trying to pick up with your name, with your face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I applaud. You got a, just a I little bit. I appreciate it. Just see if I sag. Nah. No, it ain't gonna work. No, you can't do the sag, bro. Nah. You can't do the sag. Yeah, I'm, I'm too old to be sagging. I got bills. Yeah, you're right, you're right, right. Right. It's not skinny enough. It's a bottom. 
bottom. At the bottom, that's what it is. Yeah. And he kind of has that Michael Jordan yeah. thing where he be wearing off courts. So yeah, like he's a part of the with a more tapered bottom? Yeah. yeah, a little slimmer. A little slimmer on the bottom. That'd be good. Yeah. 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 Step in the name of love. Yeah, yeah, see, I don't like that. That shit works for me. Go ahead, yeah. Step in the Hey, hey, yeah, you can you can wet on seven. Then the old niggas be flipping it up. I think these are uh, the <laughs> So next we're going to go to the South Loop Hotel, which is one of the very few black owned hotels in the country. Oh my God, Leigh, guess what? <laughs> what? Lord, I don't like <laughs> I got a surprise for you. What? Okay, so you know how you said you wanted to get out here some more? I got a blind date for you. But, okay, right. He fine though, like, trust me when I tell you he fine. He got all his teeth? Yeah, he got all his damn teeth. Is he tall? And he work out, and okay. he's tall, and okay. he smell good. Okay. And I got you. So how do you know him? I met him through um, one of my homeboys. He is a, um, a promoter. Okay. Yeah, but he always be with like their cousins or whatever. But he cool. Like he don't never be in no drama. I don't never see him with a whole lot of. Bitches. What What does he do? Like I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I you know, I ain't get in his business like that. Yeah, okay. but you, I got you, boo. All right, I'm gonna try it. I don't Bree, I swear to God. I'm telling you, if I got the, you. Trust he look me. like some shit out of. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dare do you like that. Bush. He fine. He fine. Because right. if I wasn't hooking him up with you, I might be looking at his... Mm, oh, all right. Mm. All right. Well, we'll see if he's cool. So now I'm about to go on this blind date that Bree set me up on. So I'm just... I don't want to have to kill this girl. I hope it's good. Hug. How are you? Hi, you're Mike? Yes. How you doing? Mike, Mike, I'm Layla. Layla, Layla. I'm Bree's friend. Hey, what she is. told you about yeah, yeah. She definitely did. I hate to ask the resume question, but oh. what do you like what do you do for a living, I guess? Uh, that's construction. Just, construction, yeah, okay. We have a house. Oh that's nice. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah. alright. Yeah. How'd you get into Oh with me? Yeah. Um I'm into journalism. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I do like journalism cool, stuff. Cool. Been doing that radio. Been doing podcast. that for a long time. Yep, podcast. Oh, that's, that's been no. doing work to your sex a lot of radio stations. Okay, okay. So been doing okay. that a long time. You got all your teeth, that's yeah, good. Uh, yeah, got to. <laughs> got to. My mom kept me. Okay, yeah. that's good. So you have no girlfriend or nothing? Nah, nah. You ain't got no nah, girlfriend? Nah. Okay, I'm now cold, chilling, niggas right be lying. Right. Like, oh, yeah, they good. do. Yeah, they but do. You don't. But uh, one thing uh, for sure, two things for certain, lying don't get you no. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So right. I keep it 100 out the gate. <laughs> If it work, it work, if it don't, it don't. Right, you know right. Saying? So, no, nah, I'm, I'm chilling right now. Okay, so after the date, I was feeling very excited, actually. Uh, he was very, he had really nice eyes. He had a great personality. He was very sexy. He was very calm. I liked his energy. I felt like we had a lot in common. He had some sense about himself. He appeared to have some great sense about himself. We were vibing, so I really enjoyed the day. It's just, we don't live in the same city, so I thought that was a little, make little things a little complicated, but other than that, yeah, he was a great guy. So the next place we're headed is the meet and greet, and it's being held at a black-owned clothing store called Addison and Clark on the south side of Chicago. This place is also kind of special to me too. The guy that owns it, we grew up skating together, so there's um, a really good connect there. He's new to fashion um, as far as having a store, and I'm excited to show his store off as well. Man, I'm right here with my man Blake. 
at Addison and Clark out here in Chicago. Man, how you doing, Lake? Man, I'm good. Okay, now what made you want to get a clothing line out here in the heart of Chicago? You know what? I've always been into fashion since a kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm talking about since grammar school, high school, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, a couple of my peers have lines like Fashion Geek, Fly, yeah, yeah. you know, big brands that's here in Chicago, whatever. So that, they just kind of inspired me to kind of branch off and do it myself, just me and my brother. How important do you think it is for black business people to have businesses in Chicago to, to show a different side of the city? Because we hear so many negative things about Chicago, but yeah. we don't see people like you. Yeah. How important do you think that is to showcase what you're doing? Um, I think it's important for the culture. Yeah. I think it's important for the culture because um, it's kind of like, it kind of puts us in a positive light. Yeah. And it kind of inspires the youth. And the youth is really what matters because the youth is the future. I mean, me and you, we're going to leave this place pretty soon. Absolutely. Not pretty yeah. soon. Yeah, not too, you know, too soon. <laughs> not too soon, <laughs> but at some point, you know what yeah, I mean? So um, that's pretty much my goal right now is just to inspire the youth, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just to kind of like break what we've seen generation after generation after generation. The meet and greet in Chicago was so exciting to me because everybody was like really, really upbeat. And the best part about it was I got to meet Bree's mama and daddy. And I love her parents. They're really, really sweet people. And I got to meet like a lot of her friends. So that was cool. That was, I, I loved Chicago. I just love the energy out there. That's like one of my favorite cities right now. The meet and greet in Chicago was off the chain. We had a great time. I met Bree's parents. Bree's dad is a player from the fucking Himalayas. I love Bree's dad. He had pimp juice seeping off his body. I loved him. We hit it off right away. But we really enjoyed Chicago. The vibe was great. The family came out. And I always loved Chicago. I got my start with brothers and sisters in Chicago. They were the first people to buy my books. So I've always had a lot of love for Chicago. And we had a great time. We got to come back here to do some more stuff. The meet and greet in Chicago. My parents acted a fool when they saw Tariq. Like my mom is so starstruck. I can't even, I was so embarrassed, but she's the cutest. Um, she she really loved, like she saw him and was like, oh my God, Tariq. I'm like, hey, your daughter's here. Um, but a lot of people came out and supported. Uh, I really wasn't expecting that because Chicago can be kind of funny. like. Y'all funny style. We don't really mess with a whole lot of people, but for their own people, they came out, they rocked with us. Um, it was really cool. Good times. <laughs>